Hi, this is a uh, video log, a video blog rather, a vlog uh, for the creativity and uh, creative thinking module. Um, I am going to record uh, an updated bibliography of a uh, uh, talk given by Seymour Patrick uh, to some Japanese educators uh, in the early 1980s. Um, and the title of the talk was Constructionism versus Constructionism. And uh, he's talking about mathematics, uh, computer aided uh, teaching, um, constructionism. He doesn't really talk about old style constructionism too much, uh, but he's talking about his experiences uh, in classrooms um, and with other educators and having children create and make uh, things in the classroom during learning. Uh, and uh, I'm interested in Papert, um, and I'm interested in constructionism and uh, the idea of having students make and create their own learning and choose their own projects seem to have fairly strong um, parallels with digital storytelling in the classroom. Uh, so this is going to be quite quote heavy from Papert. I'll try and include the quotes as a transcript in the blog. Uh, it's quite quite heavy because um, Papert has a fantastically good style. Is succinct, clear, and definite, and often I think uh, he is the best communicator of his own words. Certainly, his ideas certainly are not uh, So he begins uh, by greeting the Japanese educators at a video conference in the early 1980s, which is kind of interesting. And uh, he opens up with a quote. He uh, says, that, "Well, teaching is important, but learning is much more important." And constructionism means giving children good things to do so they can learn by doing much better than they could before. And this is kind of the key idea of constructionism, the idea is that students will learn by doing things or using things to do things. And so they'll have an impact on their environment. And they will be constructing, making, and offering, using tools, using ideas, using techniques um, to construct and make actual things. Um, and digital storytelling seems to have put a strong parallel there because students are using technology um, to create specific things, in this case, digital artifacts um, that they have ownership of. He goes on to say, uh, and it, this is what we're trying to do uh, find ways in which the technology enables children to use knowledge, mathematical knowledge and other knowledge, not just store it in their head so that 12 years later it's going to be good for them. Nobody can learn well like that. It's a terrible way of learning. We all like to learn so that we can use what we've learned, and that's what we're trying to do with these children. So this is a very important idea in constructionism, that um, you're, in order to learn, you're really going to want to learn to use your learning to achieve or do things, to shape your world, to shape your environment, to create objects, to create tools, um, to create resources. And it also reminds me of Bandura as well, to a certain degree, have this idea of utility um, that, especially for adult learners, but I think children to a degree as well, um, that they need to know what use they can make of what it is that they're learning. Um, and constructionism gives you that use very, very directly. It allows you um, or requires you or facilitates you to make and shape objects and things that you want to make and shape and create. Um, using the target learning that they're trying to um, focus in on. And digital storing is quite the uh, digital storytelling is sort of a similar idea uh, that uh, you are using a set of tools, uh, specifically digital tools, computers and software and things like that, to create and shape a particular object that you've probably chosen yourself, uh, a story that you want to tell yourself, um, and you are know, using it to, to shape that. Um, Papert's idea is that knowledge is, is for something, it is to make things, it is to do things, it is to shape and change your world. Um, and Bandura's ideas of utility and self-efficacy are tied in here quite strongly as well. Uh, that if we can give students the idea that um, through using these particular tools, they become more adept, more powerful, more capable, and more in charge of shaping their own world or their own environment and their own choices, more capable of that and supportive with the resources to achieve it, then this is extremely important in motivation. And although Papa doesn't make that link, I think it's quite a strong thing. Bandura's idea that self-advocacy is the most important aspect of motivation. 
and constructionism where students are choosing what they create, or digital storytelling where students are, tell, are choosing the story that they will tell. If they're supported uh, in that, if they're given the tools to achieve that, then it would seem that this is quite a positive thing to do in terms of self-efficacy and that you're probably looking at quite motivated learning. And Papa goes on to say, and he's talking about using computers to make music or to create pictures or to create games. He says, um, so in a way, the computer becomes invisible. And the computer becomes just an instrument. Uh, I said, if you ask that child making the picture, he's talking about an earlier example here, what are you doing? She would have said, making a picture, making a bird. And it's interesting to compare this. Imagine going to a poet and saying, what are you doing? And you'd be very surprised if the poet said, I'm using a pencil. And the poet would have said, I'm writing a poem. Or maybe, just leave me alone, I'm busy. Of course, the poet was using a pencil. But that's not worth mentioning. And the same should be true of computers. Um, so this is really, really interesting, especially from the point of view of digital storytelling. Part of the idea of what we're trying to do is create digital fluency and um, sort of a discerning eye for choosing and selecting resources and a uh, critical faculty for weighing evidence. And also there's the topical element as well. If you're digital storytelling in science, you want your students to learn about what the topic is. Um, but the computer itself is not an explicit part of this process. It's incidental, although it's extremely important. The focus is on what is produced and not on how you are producing it. So in both constructionism and digital storytelling, Yet the effect in both is to promote and, and help produce expertise and learning um, in the process itself without explicitly drawing attention to it as the main purpose. Um, so digital storytelling and um, construction have uh, another parallel here that what you're focusing on is telling a story, creating a story. Um, your students will learn a huge amount about that story while creating it, although that's not the explicit focus. And they'll learn a huge amount about the tools and methods and process that they need to create that story, which are additional learning outcomes. But those learning outcomes are not the explicit um, point of the process for them. The explicit point of the process is for them to find something they want to say and then use tools to say it. Um, Papa continues, um, one, one of the things uh, that's wrong with school, I said, was that what you learn there, you can't really use. And another thing that's wrong with school is that there's one way to do it, and that doesn't happen in the real world either. In the real world, there are many ways to do things, and this is how creativity develops. This is how people make exciting new discoveries, because they try many different ways to get the results they're looking for. And this is a really exciting um, line from Papa read because he's making this explicit link between constructionism and this holds for digital storytelling as well um, and and creativity and an explicit link between creativity and real world utility um, and Ken Robinson who I'm not a huge fan of talks about this to a degree as well but I do think he has a point that creativity is a way of future proofing your students for an uncertain future um, and I think Papa is, is pointing to something similar as well in digital storytelling in its attempt to foster and develop creativity as a function of independent learning, but also for itself. They're all trying to do the same thing. They're all trying to prepare students for the real world environment where they will need to be problem solvers, where they will need to engage with uncertain and changing environments um, and be equal to them. Um, uh, and the way that we do that is by creating or facilitating students who are creative, they're problem solvers, they're independent, uh, they're capable of um, envisaging and engaging with projects and bringing them to fruition creatively while also dealing with all the demands that that process will place on them. Uh, it's a key idea in Papert's constructionism. Uh, and also in the use of creativity and digital storytelling to promote creative learners equipped with real world skills for an uncertain environment. Um, and I think that's a very, very common idea in terms of trying to um, develop and facilitate and nurture creativity in students.
Um, he goes on to talk about um, um, children who are creating their own software, which is part of how he focuses on teaching mathematics. And he talks about these, these two who created the, their own game in the computer. And he goes, well, making a game draws on the kind of intellectual passion that you see in children when they go to the video screen playing ready-made video games. And I have nothing against games. But if the children could make them or modify them, I think they would learn ten times as much. Um, and this is also a very common idea in construction, is in digital storytelling and problem-based learning as well, uh, which is that learning by doing, by creating, by making, um, uh, where students are the agents themselves in terms of making things, in terms of creating things, uh, can and does um, increase learning. Uh, I have some quibbles with that. I, I think that that um, problem-based learning and construction is something that needs to be very scaffolded, or somewhat scaffolded, or sometimes not scaffolded at all. But that depends on your learners, and that depends on their relationship to technology and what they're learning. Novice learners in a constructionist or digital storytelling environment will probably need a lot more scaffolding, feedback, and support than non-novice learners. So um, I, I agree with lots of what they're saying, but I think it's, uh, it's important to include into scaffolding. And Ori Clark um, uh, talks quite a lot about this, um, and, and so do the Sweller and Concursion, and it's uh, an account of, of, um, uh, of their paper on uh, unstructured problem based learning and constructivism for novice learners. And I tend to, to go with that. I think novice learners and uh, the amount of prior knowledge that the student has, and they're trying to have scaffolding to a degree. They don't need the process, so I think you do well. Um, Papert also talks about an interesting um, individual case study of uh, an experience of somebody learning, um, um, a little girl learning fractions in a mathematics class who, who was, as he put it, bottom in the class in mathematics. And she's engaging with that with a piece of software, um, with an instruction piece of software. And she has um, kind of a satori or a breakthrough moment, and he describes it here. The key moment is the transition when fractions stop being teacher's knowledge and become her knowledge. She appropriates fact fractions. She relates to them. You see her talking about two-thirds as a hard fraction. You see a screen image, which is a typical teacher textbook representation of a fraction of two-thirds of a pie, a circle divided into sectors. This is somebody else's knowledge. Then, all of a sudden, there's a connection. Ebonique is now thinking about fractions, and she's thinking about her thinking about fractions. Um, so this is the amazing result of construction is learning, that by doing very simple things, the children improve their ability to learn. Ebony was learning by making software in which she talked about fractions. So he, he was talking about this kind of metacognitive process, which you also get in digital storytelling. There's a metacognitive process going on where you're talking about the process of talking about the subject. Um, you're, you're making an object, you're making a thing, and it requires you to reflect on it. Happening. In Ebony's case, she's making software to talk about or teach fractions. In digital storytelling, the students are creating a story to talk about something that they want to teach, and as a result or as a function of that, learn. Um, Papert is talking about this idea of ownership of the knowledge that the student suddenly has a transition whereby they are able to see it as a function of themselves and their own lives. Um, it's not somebody else's knowledge, it's their knowledge. Um, and that the process of making their knowledge is also a reflective process where there's metacognition going on, which involves thinking about how you're going to teach this, thinking about how you're thinking about it. Um, and, uh, and, and that's kind of one of the aims of, of digital storytelling, which is to create both a sense of ownership, but also a reflective and metacognitive space um, involved in the production of knowledge for other people, which is also unwittingly or knowingly the production and creation of knowledge.